this is just going to be a quick unboxing and setup of the new Asus Lyra mesh Wi-Fi routers. I've done a few unboxing and setup of routers in the past, and the Asus Lyra routers promise to be a premium mesh router setup. Currently, uh, we have about five routers in our home, uh, and it's quite the setup, but we also use Google Wi-Fi. Google Wi-Fi is uh, great, however it can't handle, we have about 40 devices just between phones, laptops, Chromecasts, Alexas, all the different smart products that have to be in the same network. Uh, we have about 40 of those and uh, Google Wi-Fi just can't keep up. So we're going to do an unboxing and setup of this router and determine if this is superior. Let's get started. The outside of the box, pretty straightforward. It is different from the original packaging that we saw in some of the early preview unboxings. Um, I'll just give you a quick turnaround here on the outside. It does come with a two-year warranty, which is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and open it up. It feels very Apple-like with this clear plastic and just the wet box feel so far. I will say of all the routers that I have reviewed unboxed, Asus has always been the best. So when Asus finally released their mesh router system, I could not not do it. I had to give it a try. Google's was the best previously, but there are some issues with Google that did not seem to be solved. And I'm hoping that Asus has addressed them. So when you open it up, you get a box within a box. Cardboard tab reveals <clears throat> your typical stop, cut, don't return this, call us if you have trouble. A little useless piece of foam and you get the first Wi-Fi puck. On the outside, you've got this plastic on top. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it off. Four. Apparently it's got several rips in it. Bottom we've got a lot of venting. Two Ethernet ports and power. It says start for those that might wonder what you would do with it. It has a pairing button. We'll read about what that does here in a minute. <clears throat> Pull out the first box. And you are greeted with another piece of foam and another router. I don't know if anybody's seen the other, the previous early unboxings, but I do like this box setup better. It's just more clean, stacked version versus the, they, they, it's kind of weird the way they did it. They tried to, I think, mirror it off of Google Wi Fi's before, and I like this setup better. Same thing, go for three. Although this is a little annoying to get out. Another foam, another router. Peel the plastic off. And you've got a third one. There's yet another box here. And I'm guessing we'll get power cables. <clears throat> VIP member warranty notice, and then the Lyra Quick Start Guide, which, interesting on the website, as of a couple days ago, there was only the Chinese version of this, it's good to see it in English. It's got all the different color settings, random breathing, light cyan, everything's good, red, lost connection, etc. and so forth. And pull this out. We've got a third box within a box. This one has an Ethernet cable, flat like the Google series, and three little power adapters. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see what we see. I'm going to migrate this video to the location of our primary Google Wi-Fi. We'll 
We'll zoom there. Okay, so we're installing this at our primary Wi-Fi point location. As you can see, we've got a couple other um, routers that are actually just acting as access points. Uh, we have those set up to be on the same network as the mesh Wi-Fi, but we dedicate those to ones to smart home connected devices and the others to Chromecasts. One is specifically for Chromecasts, both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. We have 10 Chromecasts on the network and we want those to have dedicated traffic. Uh, out with the old and in with the new. Got the Ethernet wired in here. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in. Now on these, you'll notice that there is no indication which one is internet. ASUS says in the documentation that... Hello there. All right, Siri, thank you. Uh, ASUS says that... I'm really not equipped to answer such questions. Thank you, Siri. ASUS says that um, when you set it up for the first time, whichever port you plug it into, you'll, it'll ask you which one is internet, which one is LAN, and then it's forever set that way until you reset it. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in. This is our internet cable. I'll plug that into the outside and plug this into the interior cable. And we're going to power it on and see what happens. Immediately you get a white light that changes colors here. I'm almost expecting it to talk to me. I've been setting up too many echoes, I think. I've got here the ASUS app. The Lyra app. This is Welcome to Lyra. Let's press start. What you will need, Lyra Ethernet cable, power adapter, modem or existing router. Connect to your Lyra. Lyra has been connected. Power on your Lyra. Lyra has been powered on. Wait until you see solid white light on top of Lyra. Keeps thinking I'm saying Siri, which is pretty annoying. On the top of Lyra. Don't yet see that solid white light. It's still changing colors here. Part of the reason that I opted to go for the Asus was that the Google Wi-Fi's there we go, our solid white light. The Google Wi-Fi's to date still do not accurately use Ethernet backhaul. I want I understand the point behind mesh and I like the mesh networks, but I want a mesh network that uses Ethernet as the backhaul between the mesh networks. And Google's capable of it, but it never worked reliably. There's a huge forum online about it and nobody ever really got it working right. Um, however, ASUS doesn't even say it supports that at all, but we'll see. Alright, search Lyra. Got the solid light. Kind of looks blue in the video, but it is white. Solid white light. Found it. Connecting to. And she's flashing now. Lyra is found. Connect to your Lyra existing modem box. And it says, set up your admin username and password. I'm going to just put that over here behind the closed doors. Okay, what, where is the location of Lyra? We are in the living room. Wayne detected. Searching for your modem. This is Asus's first attempt at doing this kind of a setup like Google had. No internet connection, wanna bet? Let's try manual setup. DHCP. All I had to say is DHCP and now it says create your Lyra network. I'm gonna put in our network name and our network key. <clears throat> Applying settings to your Lyra. I was fairly impressed with its ability to detect it without me having to connect to anything or do anything different. It must use some kind of Bluetooth low energy or something similar. It just worked right out of the box, which was impressive. 
I'm not going to cover in this video the setup of the additional two Wi-Fi pucks unless it wants me to do it right now. Um, I might show setting up one of them. I'm just going to go to the other two locations that I have the Google Wi-Fi and swap them out and let it set them up. Go to iPad's Wi-Fi and connect to the network. Come back to this app. Can do. Apparently the boot process took longer than we expected. However, the network is there. I connected to it. It says Lyra is set up. Do you want to add another Lyra? Yes. Move your steps. That's interesting. Pick up the, pick up the next Lyra and your app. Pick up your app. Then move your steps to the place where you want to set up next Lyra. That's clearly some translation. This is early on. I'm sure they'll translate that better. This is kind of interesting. Reach previous Lyra. Please make sure that the place of the next Lyra can reach the Wi-Fi signal. Obviously. Make space open. Keep your Lyra in an open space. Keep your Lyra in an open and spacious location will make it easier to communicate with other Lyras. I think somebody just used Google Translate. This is a very early app. Minimize interference. Keep your Lyra away from Bluetooth devices, microwave ovens, and cordless phones to avoid interference. Power up your Lyra, wait until it displays a solid white light, then click connect below. Currently it says not found. So I'm going to go set up a second Lyra and we'll return to this app. Okay, so it turns out it was very tricky to get the Lyra set up. <coughs> the uh, I have a degree in IT, and it took me over three hours to get it actually working properly. And the main issue was the way that I had set it up originally. I have, because of the way Mesh works, I have all of my smart home devices on the on a separate access point which serves as a switch if you will and I had that plugged in at the same time as the internet and so it, it just threw everything off. Um, I had ended up having to reset all of the access points and then plug just the internet in to one of them. I was able to get it set up and then I ran a firmware update on it. I ended up having to do that on all three of them. Set them all up, unplug them, while only having one plugged in at a time, I updated all of them and then I reset two of them to factory defaults once they were all updated and plugged the main one back in and then when I plugged the uh, switch into the LAN port everything worked properly. However, uh, everything is not working as it should. Once I'm in You'll see I have 23 clients connected. Um, these are all of the, very few of these are actually on the wireless. Most of these are through the switch. Um, I'm just going to show you the Lyra setup screen here. There is no Wi Fi control whatsoever. The Wi Fi is managed completely on the back end. This is similar to Google and all the other mesh Wi Fi systems. Um, although this does look familiar, this does look like the uh, typical ASUS login screen, and you do have most of your options, including advanced QoS, AI protection. Uh, the AI, AI protection is pretty advanced. I have all of this off just because I need it to only handle basic Wi-Fi for me, um, but it, you do have those options. Um, aside from that, this is very similar to what you would expect out of ASUS. Um, the I'm, I'm going to be returning it, and the reason is, and maybe they'll fix this in the future, but the reason for that is because um, although it does work, once I have everything set up, just three access points, even if I'm sitting right next to the primary access point, if I run a speed test, I only get 50 to 75 megabit, both on my computer and on my phone. I'm not sure if that's just because it's there's some bugs in it or what, but it is incredibly slow. Um, it is not performing, uh, and given that it took three hours to get it set up correctly, it is not performing near what I would have hoped. Um, the app does work 
which is great. But um, again, it's just not it, the app is finicky. The whole setup is very finicky. I, I get what Asus is trying to do, and I've typically loved Asus products over any other routers. Uh, but with at least at, at the launch date in July of 2017, this is very buggy, very very buggy. Um, if you do end up purchasing this and you want to get it working, I'd recommend using it only for a very small home network setup where you um, where you only have a few devices connected. And I would recommend turning the first one on with nothing plugged in. And when it tells you to plug in your home or your, your modem, plug that into one of the ports and then go from there. It should set up fairly easily. Um, the other thing I would recommend is well, I was, I was going to add this as well. There is no option in here for Ethernet backhaul. In fact, I have an, I had an Ethernet backhaul set up for the Google Wi-Fi, and I think that was something that was throwing it off. I think it was creating a loop in the network because each of the access points acts like a switch. And I'm, I'm plug, essentially, I was plugging the other two access points back into the same network. And I, I think that had something to do with throwing it off, but Asus does, it looks like they don't have any plans to add Ethernet backhaul. Google does offer it, even though it doesn't work well. Um, the Google Wi-Fi isn't what I hoped it would be when you have 40 devices connected, but at least it did work 95% of the time. And I'm going to be going back to that. Thanks for watching.